the rise of an empire. Dun 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 dun. dun. I'm gonna have such better theme music in the future. It's gonna be great. However, we're gonna stick with the theme music we have today. And today we're looking at the empire of the Greeks and specifically what's called classical Greek. Uh, when we have Athens and Sparta uh, in particular rising up in these powerful city-states that we'll talk about later on. But before we can even get there, uh, we need to figure out where they came from uh, out of what our last video was on, the Minoans and Mycenaeans. So when we had the Mycenaean Empire, um, perhaps they fell because of an invasion. Um, it's probably one of the biggest reasons why. Uh, but we have what follows immediately after is something called the Greek Dark Ages. And the Greek Dark Ages occur, uh, it's about 300 years of Greek history from around 1100 to 800 BCE. And it does kick off with the Mycenaean Empire falling, and what it results in is a destruction of a great deal of these palaces. Remember, the Mycenaeans were pretty advanced when it came to architecture and building, so many of these palaces and uh, cities are destroyed, um, which is why when it comes to archaeological evidence of these places, there isn't a whole lot, namely because right around when they existed, uh, their destruction occurred. And in addition to uh, the Dark Ages and some invasions, it didn't help that we had the Sea People, uh, which were in fact not the people of the sea in Little Mermaid, uh, but more of these people, who this is actually an Egyptian uh, illustration. The Egyptians also had to deal with the Sea People. No one's quite sure who the Sea People are. There's not a lot of evidence of them, uh, but they did exist and did travel around the Mediterranean, uh, destroying and doing some uh, Sea People-y things on ships. So there's also the belief that the Sea People uh, resulted or were part of these Dark Ages that the Greeks were under. And as you can imagine, Dark Ages weren't particularly pleasant. Uh, you had a lot of uh, disruption when it came to uh, attacks. You had people really forgetting and not really uh, using written language. So if you think back, there was that linear A language that we don't know even what it means. Uh, there was another language called Linear B, which was also stopped being used. Um, you had a lot of the pottery and other architecture that ceased to be done. Um, so it's really called the Dark Ages because it's a step backwards in advancing. Which is important to realize that certainly not always are humans going forward in history. Sometimes they stop, sometimes they uh, in fact get worse than they were before. So for about 300 years, uh, the Greeks stopped advancing and uh, became much more primitive types of people that they had been prior to the Minoans and Mycenaeans. Uh, and since they didn't have these big cities, they didn't have uh, large palaces and things to govern, uh, what ended up taking over for power in Greece were small collections of families also known as oikoi, uh, which can certainly mean a number of different things, but for our purposes, the oikoi is this idea of uh, small families, uh, it's also called the oikois, that take control um, of different areas. So the families would have resources uh, for land, and they would really control a smaller collection of people and land. However, all good things, or all bad things, hopefully, come to an end. And around 800 BC, we start seeing uh, the Greek civilizations advancing more. 
and namely we know that because we start seeing a lot of artifacts uh, we start seeing written documents and well, not really as much documents but more written records on pottery as you can see here on the right and uh, carved into stone as on the left so the Greek alphabet became uh, more solidified and advanced and if you look much of it is similar to our modern day alphabet um, so around 800 we started seeing a growth of the Greek states both uh, culturally politically economically they are growing and becoming more advanced again and while Greece certainly had a number of difficulties in it uh, namely as we've looked at the geography really did prevent a lot of people when it came to travel uh, travel was very difficult in ancient Greece um, which resulted in a lot of the really travel and uh, relationships between the Greeks to be difficult. You're isolated in communities. Um, so in addition to that farming issues that we've talked about as well, a lot of Greece is mountainous and rocky. Uh, so while they are developing further from these Greek ages or the Dark Ages, you have still issues about uh, Greece advancing because of their geography. So Greece starts to establish a number of colonies around the Mediterranean, similar uh, to our friends the Phoenicians. So they establish colonies all over the Mediterranean uh, and up into the Black Sea so that their trade can advance, and it does. Uh, Greek trade is, uh, provides goods that the Greeks need because they can't produce as much, and it provides the wealth that is... Uh, ends up become allowing Greece to grow further. And with that wealth, lots of cities start developing, um, and Greece starts to experiment with different ways to run their settlements. And as most civilizations started, Greece starts with uh, kings, those monarchs, uh, and certainly we had a number of kings in ancient Greece, especially when it came to the Minoans and Mycenaeans. But as the years progressed, uh, around 800, they start seeing what's called an oligarchy. And oligarchs would mostly be very rich men who controlled a lot of land and thus had power. And those rich men would share the power amongst themselves and rule a small portion of land. However, uh, luckily for us, and I suppose the Greeks as well, what developed was something called the polis. And in Greece, they had polis. And polis was essentially a city-state. It was one city which governed itself and was separate from other cities around it. So an example of a city-state would be Athens. It is a country as well as a city. Today, we have a few city-states in the world, namely Monaco is a city-state. Uh, Vatican City is also, it's an independent country, but it's only the size of one city. So we have these polis uh, that are ruled, as mentioned just now, by a variety of different rulers, from kings to rich people. Uh, but eventually, the Greeks decide to rule them uh, by this, an assembly. And... It's a group of citizens that decide on the laws. And under Greece, any free man could speak in the assembly. It would look something like this, where you have a group of people that every person that is free and a man would be able to uh, speak and vote. And it's really where we start getting into democracy. However, we will not get much further into democracy with this video because that's a whole another fun video at our hands in the future.